Praise God. Genesis chapter 15, Job chapter 28, James chapter 4. Genesis chapter 15, 5 through 11, Job 28, verse 7, James 4, verse 7. Genesis 15, verse 5 says, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. He said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? He said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, a she goat three years old, a ram of three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He took unto him all these, divided them in the midst, and laid them peace one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down, somebody say when the fowls came down. Several translations say vultures came down upon the carcasses. Abram drove them away. Job chapter 28 and verse 7 says, there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. In James chapter 4, verse 7, you should know this one, Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. My assignment tonight is to preach to you at war with vultures. At war with vultures. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you're about to do in this place. We take authority over anything that's tried to come in here with any family. And we command anything demonic to be broken and to be removed from the atmosphere. And we thank you right now that miracles are in this room and deliverance is in this room and healings and breakthroughs and sacrifice. So many things are in here. But most importantly, we think that you are in here. And we know anything can happen if you're in the room. And so we come fully believing that no matter what the adversary is or says, you will get the last word in the end. If you love him and you believe, he's going to do something would you clap your hands to Jesus right now hallelujah high five your neighbor tell him let's roll you may be seated I believe that this is not some deep revelation but there is one thing that heaven and hell are both attracted to. There's something that angels are attracted to, God's attracted to, demons are attracted to. Obviously, Satan is a demon, and so he's attracted to it, and that is sacrifice or commitment. I believe it is something powerful when a child of God decides I'm going beyond where I was before and I'm going to do something for God that I've never done before. Whether that's giving or fasting or praying or serving, I'm going to sacrifice and commit to a level I never have before. That gets heaven's attention and that gets hell's attention quicker than anything because sacrificing says I am dead serious about what I need God to do in my life I'm laying down the distraction I'm laying down the excuses I'm laying down everything that's in the way because I have a need that only God can answer and so I'm going to go after God with everything and is there anybody serious in here about what you need God to do in your house in your country So when somebody starts fasting or praying or witnessing or reading their Bible all the time or giving or serving, they are telling the spirit world, I'm as serious as I can possibly be. Don't tell me you're serious if you don't sacrifice. Don't tell me you're serious if you can't serve and if you can't give and if you can't pray and you don't fast. I don't want to hear any testimony from that. But I love the people that say whatever it takes, whatever it costs, you can count me in. Sign me up, Pastor, because I am serious about what God's going to do in my life. Give me some young people that are dead serious. I'll show you a city that the strongholds will come down because young people with a serious mindset will bring revival. (laughs) 
The devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so if you are in the flesh and you don't lay things on the altar and you let that flesh live you are attracted by the enemy that is attracted to you is the lion it's a the lion kills flesh and then eats the flesh it's a predator and so it's attracted to flesh so the more you say I'm not going to sacrifice to God the more likely you're in for a lion fight in your future that you want no part of he is as a roaring lion looking for who he may devour he's looking for flesh he loves bad attitudes he loves critics he loves the skeptics and the non-worshippers and the people that are the problem every other day no matter what you do for them he loves that because that is flesh that is alive What type of spirit do you face if you are killing the flesh? If you are trying to be serious? If you are giving and praying and fasting and doing all you can? If the lion is attracted to flesh that's alive, what is attracted to flesh that is dead? And that is where the vultures enter in lions hunt their prey vultures do not they are scavengers and they feed off of dead flesh they feed off of sacrifices they feed off of commitments made to God they're the ones that show up after you make up your mind I'm going to do something for God the vulture is what comes by circling the sacrifice vultures circle dead things Contrary to popular opinion, vultures do not circle dying flesh. It has to be dead for the, for the vulture to be attracted to it. Hell does not circle hypocrites. You can fake the whole church out and be a poser on the platform and dance all you want, but hell knows if you're the real deal on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can act like you're living for God and you're so holy and you're everything. But the devil knows if you're living it at the house like you're living it at the sanctuary. Vultures do not circle flesh that's still alive. It has to be dead. Hell is attracted to the real thing. Vultures... Do not eat rotting meat. It has to be freshly killed. Freshly dead. That even makes sense. The meat has to be fresh. It's not attracted to old sacrifice. Hell doesn't care what you gave five years ago. I lost all the shouters. Hell doesn't care about your fast 10 years ago. They want to know what are you about to do now. Oh, it's getting quiet. I feel the spirit world right there. They want to know how far you're going to go now because that, that, that sacrifice is over. They don't want that because they lost that battle. But what they are attracted to, what are you about to do in 2023 for God that you've never done? They don't want last year's consecration. They want to know what your plan is this year. That's the vulture. The vulture can fly up to 30 thousand feet in the air higher than Mount Everest. What's that mean? No matter how high you get in God. Don't, don't ever assume that you've arrived in some pinnacle at the devil. The devil loves pinnacles. He took Jesus to a pinnacle and said, I know you like high places. He took him to a mountaintop. The vulture loves it when you get high as far as you can in God and say, take me as the, into the highest. The vulture said, we can go there too. The 
the vulture will travel up to 1,250 miles for a dead meal. No matter how far you go, hell is hungry for your sacrifice. Some people think, well, as soon as I laid on the altar, I've got victory over the devil. But they don't understand that when something's coming and there's a fresh connection with God, you are never more attractive to the enemy. Jesus said that when you, the word comes, when the sower sows the seed, which is the word, and when it hits the wayside, the vows or the vultures. And then he, then he named who the vultures were. He said, and by the way, the birds are Satan you're wondering anytime you get a word from God something starts circling anytime you leave an altar call making up your mind I'm going to do something for God like I never have I'm going to be more focused than I've ever been something says I smell dead flesh Vultures start scavenging when the sun rises. Just as soon as your early morning prayer's over, bro. This is why you feel God at 7 a.m., but don't feel him at noon because something comes to your altar between breakfast and lunch, and you feel, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You feel like a different person at lunch than you were in the prayer closet because there's a vulture attracted to your commitment. They are attracted to dead flesh, not almost dead flesh. Paul said, I die daily, not I almost die daily. Well, I just have my morning devotion. Do you know what devotion means? To slaughter, to utterly destroy, to exterminate, to extinguish. Don't tell me that you're slaughtering your flesh if you forget your prayer meeting five minutes later. You warmed up the coals on the altar, but you've learned the e evil secret of untying yourself from the altar anytime it gets too hot and conviction gets too real. I just turn pastor off when he gets on the subject that I'm not submitted in, and therefore I just get off the altar and you still got lions on your trail because the lion says, yeah, get rebellious. Get an attitude because you don't want that flesh to die. But as soon as the offering is on the altar, as soon as you make the commitment, here they come. As soon as you go to a youth event young person HYC or whatever it is in AYC and you come back on fire and I'm going to save this city it's not coincidence you meet the girl the next week it's not coincidence you meet that boy a couple of days later or on the flight home that's the vulture I might win her. You're 12. She might be the one. You're 13, dude. She's not the one. If she is the one, you're still not ready, Holmes. Over there trying to convince Dad I've met my wife. Like, dude, you're in middle school. You're going to run away and marry her? They're attracted to the commitment. This is why Judas showed up. Right after Jesus said, okay, not my will. But fine, be done. And here came the vulture. Ready? Satan only came at Jesus twice. The first time when he fasted 40 days. And the second time inside of Judas when he had an all-night prayer meeting and his prayer and his sweat was as drops of blood. And he said, okay, I'll take on the cross. Here came the vultures.
If they come at Jesus in the flesh, don't you think they're attracted to you whenever you say, I want more of God? There are two places on the body that the vulture eats first. The first thing the vulture always goes for is the eyes. Hmm. Vultures want to eat the source of your vision. Well, I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm giving everything, but I just don't see... I just don't see how God's going to do it. You just admitted something's on your altar. They want that vision where you don't believe. Without a vision, the people perish. The eyes, the things that make tears. Well, I just can't cry in the presence of God. quiet right there where real men don't cry I guess Jesus was a wuss then he prayed with strong cryings and he wept for Lazarus and I'm pretty sure Jesus went to a cross that no dude in here would want to go to so that's a vulture telling you that you can't cry in the house of God if there's ever a place where tears should roll out of your eyes it's in the presence of God I'm not ashamed of the gospel and I'm not ashamed to weep about it. I'm not ashamed to pray and cry. So Judas, Judas kissed that cheek where the tears were flowing. That's what the vulture is attracted to. The vision. And the second place the vulture eats is the tongue so after the vision it goes for your voice because if you can't see God doing it you won't speak God will do it for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so if you don't see it and you don't believe it you won't speak it. I'd like to preach to some people that have had some vultures eating your vision. You better keep your tongue. I may not be able to see it, but I'm opening up my mouth and I'm going to declare it. We will have revival. We will see our family saved. Get away from my own. Are there any blind praisers in here? I don't know where God is. He's not on the left. He's not on the right. But I'm going to open up my mouth and praise him anyway. Because the vulture cannot have my voice. Somebody praise him like nobody's in the building. I dare you to worship God like nobody's around. There are 23 species of vultures in the world. 22 of them will flee if you make loud noise. Oh, we thought it was dead. We thought no one cared about it. Abram drove them away or in the Hebrew he blew the horn he made some noise you can't just sacrifice and hope God sees it you've got to open up your mouth every day and remind hell I gave last year I fasted three days I prayed when pastor said show up I showed up you need to remind the adversary you can't have what's on my altar Somebody make some noise with a war cry and let this world hear you.
Somebody pray in tongues right now. Twenty-two of the twenty-three species fly away, but there's one, the black vulture. It doesn't fly away when you make noise. In fact, loud noise, clapping of hands, bright lights, and music do not frighten this scavenger for it believes that all of these are just scare tactics that will not be followed through with an attack. I'm sorry. In other words, there is a spirit that doesn't take you serious just because you know the song. Just because the lights are bright and just because you get to be on the platform. Oh, I'm losing half of you. Some spirits think that what you do in here you will not follow it up out there help me Jesus some spirits think you only shout in here because you only shout in here well I'm losing all the crowd I better get back to the hype Do you want to scare the the lower ranking vultures or are you after the thing that knows, oh, you're serious. The black vulture only flees when it is resisted or when someone takes a stand against it. And says, I'm not here to clap and scare you. I will kill you if you try to get near my baby. I will fight you. If you get near my fast, I will fight you. If you get near my parents, I will fight you. If I wish somebody would get a war cry anointing and tell hell, I'm coming for you. Get away from my commitment. Get away from my atmosphere. Get away from my prayer life. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist. The devil. And he will flee in the Greek says he will seek safety by flight not he will fly away he will seek safety because he assumes you're chasing him see some spirits aren't even worried about most churches because they know you only get serious on Sunday and on Wednesday, and when, when pastor calls a fast. But when they see you start chasing them, when they say you get up for prayer and no one's around, what they're saying, you, this is what the devil literally says, it's not safe here anymore for me. Too many of you want the devil to leave your house with your music that plays in the background, but you don't read your Bible. He's not leaving. He's not leaving because you read a good quote on social media that encouraged you. He's not leaving. When someone texts you an encouraging word, he's not leaving. He's leaving. When you look at him and say, whatever it takes, I am going to get you out of this house if it's the last thing I do. 
Where are the warriors up in here? You need to stare down hell and say, I'm coming for you. You think you've been coming for me? I'm coming for you. I'm coming after everything that you're stealing from me. Well, does it really matter? Can I just be in the flesh? The devil, leave me alone. I don't know. Can you put up those verses for me? Revelation 19, 16 through 21. This is the King James. I wanted to, if you've got the NLT, I want that, but if you don't, it's okay. Because this is what it says in the King James, and I'll tell you what it says in the NLT. This is the end time. He hath on his vesture and his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Verse 17. I saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls. In the NLT, it says, Vultures that fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God. Verse 18. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them. They had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Verse 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth at all. In other words you don't make it dinner time for the vultures you take the mark dinner time for the vultures you don't commit dinner time I don't care how much money you have I don't care what position you have if kings are eaten then anybody can be eaten and I know it's serious and it's making you uncomfortable. But I've come to challenge not physical vultures, but the spirit world right now. And I want to let them know, whatever happens this weekend, whatever happens Sunday night, I come against anything that would devour it and remove it from the atmosphere. And I declare by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus that we will not just stand, we will not just shout, but we will chase everything that's been coming at our families, at our marriages, at our lost loved ones, and we will sacrifice, and we will drive them away. Does the vulture hear your shout or does the vulture see your stand? Stay standing. Do they know you get hyped up? Which I love the shouting. I'd love to have that more than anything, this type of message. But the shout without substance is just vulture food. That's why you forget what pastor preached two minutes after you leave church. What a powerful word. Yeah. What was this text? I forget. What was the title? I forget. You go to witness to a coworker. Boy, you should have been there yesterday. God really moved. We had an incredible message. What did he preach? I'll oh, think of it. And then you blame your own mind. But you didn't forget the score of the game last night. Oh, it's quiet. You don't forget the words of that song. Why are you only forgetting messages? Because the stuff's not trying to steal the sports score or the song. It's trying to steal the word that's trying to be placed in your spirit over your destiny. And hell is used to shallow shouting. I got to praise, got to let it out. 
I'm burning calories. I'm doing cardio, acting like I'm worshiping. Really don't know. Hell knows you're not dead. But if you shout, you better have some substance. This is for my kids. This is for my future. This is for my healing. This is for my deliverance. I wish somebody would show the devil just how loud you can get, just how serious you can shout, and get some substance behind it. This is for our revival. This is for the wall being broken through and more people coming in. This is for my lost loved one. If you're gonna shout, take a stand while you shout and drive out the... I can be myself here. Hope this doesn't offend you. If it does, maybe you should pray more. But charismatics can shout. And there'd be no vultures circling that. Because mm -mm. there's nothing dead on the altar. But a church that's continually giving to missions when they could take the money and do something locally that would blow everybody's mind in town but instead they say let's send it to Belgium let's send it to Haiti let's send it to Norway let's send it all over the world and I know you've got a pastor that's making a stand but I challenge Eastgate every family in here every dad, every mom, every teenager you need to stand up for what is right and say I'm with my pastor all the way where are the abyssi eyes in this room that say let me kill that giant let me kill I close with this when David met Goliath, Goliath's first words were, I will make you vulture food. Feed you the fowls of the, or the vultures. He said, what he, what he was saying was, you are going to die such an ugly death and no one's going to bury you. Everyone's going to watch the enemy eat you. That's the face of fear. And David said, oh, they're going to eat. But they want a buffet. They don't want little old me. They want you, champ. And not only that, oh, I love David. He said, I'm not just going to kill you and feed you to them. I'm going to feed the carcasses of all your bros. You know what he told Goliath? When I'm done with you, I'm chasing everything behind you. <laughs> Goliath said, I don't think you're serious. And David said, I'll show you how serious I am. When I'm done defeating you, I want everything that sent you. I want everything behind you. I want everything manipulating your words. I want victory over what's behind the voice. Oh, he, oh the, the Lord is telling me some of you are praying prayers that are too small. Just give me victory over this thing. Just help me defeat my Goliath. Help me defeat my addiction. You need to stand up and hear the voice of the enemy and look back and say, Oh, you're going to lose. But when I defeat you, I don't assume it's over. I'm not going to throw a rock and stand there and watch you get up. This time, I'm staying connected until you're defeated. 
Guess what? If somebody kills a giant, it will get contagious in the army and everybody else will say, if they did it, I can do it. And I hear God saying, charge, charge, charge. Take it this year. Have revival. Chase the enemy. Where's that kid, Alex? Alex, where are you? Come on. Come here. I received, this is, are you Alex? He received a report. When? Tuesday? That there was, there's cancer, they say. They don't know now. Found spots. Where? They said on his chest. Well, so he came in and they said he yeah. had to get a CT scan. Okay. And I think it was just a little bit. Lump on his side. I asked him, and they're backing his office, my doctor, yeah. and he's in the hospital. I asked him, I said, Did you, I just said, Sir, he said, because we were talking to him that we have a shot. He said, Do you understand? That's right, Alex. He said, He said, I know you have He doesn't know. He's just doctor. speaking cancer. Oh, we know. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed right now. I command you to be made whole and not just cancer gone. I speak over your destiny. I speak over your anointing. You will raise miracles. Let there be the sick heal. Anoint these hands. Cast out devils. In the name of Jesus, let there be great power and authority. I release to you the gift of faith right now in your body, in your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Now chase him, Alex. Chase him, Alex. I release miracles right now in this house by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus. Let the sick be healed. Let the sick be made whole. Let the sick be made whole. Every demon of depression and anxiety and torment, leave this room now and we're chasing you in the name of Jesus. Let there be breakthroughs physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus! Spots be gone. Irregular heartbeat be gone. Blood sugar normalized now. Pain from arthritis disappear right now. Back pain go away right now. Knee pain go away right now. Kidney pain go away right now. Hariko karishata. You've had your last migraine. I don't know who that's for, but those are leaving you right now and they're never coming back. Get away from our sacrifice! Judas, you will regret this encounter. Because when I go to the cross, I'm also going down to hell. Taking the keys, you're going to see me 
another time. And you're going to wish that you never got near this sacrifice. Some of you, I release a seriousness, a holy focus, a determination, discipline, temperance in your spirit to conquer that flesh. Why don't you lay hands on someone beside you and drive away anything. Speak in the spirit. Riko to rishikataya. Hiabo ruko shakata. Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Irregular heartbeat. Be made whole right now. Every diagnosis from this doctor, we do not receive in the name of Jesus. I speak a normal blood flow now in that body, in the name of the Lord. Now, in that heart, in the name of Jesus Christ. You need to let that voice out. I speak vision to come back to you. I curse hopelessness and words of discouragement and I speak life to your vision, tears to your eyes and sound to your lips. Come on. Make up your mind, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Kill this flesh, God. Kill this bad attitude in me. Kill this rebellion in me.
Hallelujah. There's been many miracles. I feel virtue in here. There's always an empty feeling when virtue flows. Something's flowing in here. There is a path which no fowl knoweth and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. Jesus said, I am the way. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You're entering a place that the spirit world cannot see you. The Holy of Holies. Devils don't dwell there. Vultures can't see inside. He shall hide me under his feathers. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Your prayer, your submission, getting under the covering is making you invisible. The vultures are high. Stop doing it your own way. Stop getting offended every chance you can. You're exposing where you are. Listen to this. I'm going to get this to the pastor. Where's he at? The Bible says that when you are angry, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Then it says, neither give place to the devil. In the Greek, that says, do not give your location to the devil. Too many of you are leaving atmospheres like this and getting into arguments before you get home. And you don't even realize it. But you're telling the vultures here, here's tonight's service. Here's my breakthrough. Here's my commitment. I release unity in every house right now. I come against the spirit of strife and division and arguing and contention. That is what's bringing the vultures to your home. Your speech. Go home and talk about how good the Lord is. Go home and tell your family what an amazing word Pastor preached Sunday. <laughs> 